Hi everyone, my name is John Hartog. I am the group leader for Gallup and I have been calling volleyball since 1977. I will let you guys do the math on that one. But let me say this, uh, the first match I called the Rehoboth Christian, I did from a stepladder. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Sharon Bays. I've been officiating for 32 years. Good evening, good evening everybody. I'm Rosita Chavez. I'm the Northwest Regional Varsity Assigner and I've been officiating more than I've actually been teaching. I actually started officiating when I was in college. Hi everybody, Jessica Dooley. I have been refing for 15 years. Um, I'm the Gallup Sub Varsity Assigner. Thank you for joining us this evening. John. Okay, so teamwork makes the dream work and we are gonna be talking about communication this evening. So, are you talking or are you communicating? So communication. It's not going. So communication, a process by which information is exchanged between individuals through a common system of symbols, signs, or behavior. Communication in the game of volleyball. Nonverbal communication encompasses approximately 80 to 90% of our communication with coaches, partners, players, and fans. Verbal language plays a minor role in communicating with our Myra decision. So just a little extra on nonverbal communication. Um, remember your facial expressions are part of the nonverbal communication. So try to keep your facial expressions neutral as well as your body language. So even if you are not the one making the call, you cannot let your body language broadcast to the coaches you disagree with the call. So always remember officials in a match, you are a team. Are you communicating effectively as an official? E effective communication involves listening. <laughs> listening involves hearing the words being said, taking in nonverbal cues such as body language and facial expressions. The next part of communication is understanding. Understanding is giving meaning to what was heard. And the last part of communication is responding to something that is, is responding to something that was said in return or to react. Most communication breakdowns happen at the understanding stage because there is often a misunderstanding or a misinterpretation of what was said. We often respond incorrectly as well. So tonight our um, presentation is on communication between the R1 and the R2, the officials and the table crew, the officials with the line judges, the R2 with the coach. So we'll all be doing um, a parts of this presentation. And then we also have, we've also included some interviews. So we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, communication between the R1 and the R2. First of all, anyone see anything wrong with the picture on the left? <laughs> okay, one, one to two days before the match. Um, 
we like to uh, have the R1 and the R2 meet, to talk together at least on the telephone. Um, usually have the R2, R1 do that. Uh, set up a meeting location, and we'd like that to be specific. As, you know, we're going to meet at Prano Fina, and we're going to meet at 3:30. I, you know, I'm driving this kind of car, so on and so forth. Um, decide on the uniform. Uh, if you're going to wear pants, if you're going to wear shorts, if you're going to wear a white shirt, if you're going to wear a pink shirt. Um, do all all of that stuff prior to. Um, the match and also I like myself as the driver uh, to contact the school the day of the match make sure that that match is still going to happen and um, tell them that I'm going to be the driver who my partner is going to be what time we're going to show up and that kind of thing. Also, communication between the R1 and the R2. Once you get to the school um, pre-match, uh, the two of you should walk around the court or at least look at the court, establish the ground rules, the non-playable areas, any concerns that you might have with the facility, um, lines too close to end walls, things like that, how you're going to handle that situation. Also, the expectations of the duties. Who's going to talk to the line judges? Who's going to talk to the table staff? Um, you also probably want to find out who's going to be in charge of that match, that person, where that person is going to be, just in case you run into any problems. I like to have my R2 assist me with pancakes, with positional faults, attack lines. And uh, there are some discrete signals that can be used between the R1 and the R2. Uh, I like to have my R2, you know, signal me if uh, they, they think that I missed um, a hands call. And uh, one of the other things that we need to do is handling of unexpected situations. Um, what are we going to do if a girl gets seriously hurt on the court? How are we going to handle that situation? And also the issuing of card. What, what is the procedure going to be between the R1 and the R2? OK, during the set, proper signals. It's really important for the R2 to mimic the signals of the R1. That way, you know, they see the R1, but they also get to see the R2 doing it. Um, constant eye contact. Um, one of the things that I, I told the group last night when we we're preparing this is that I tend to get in a hurry. Um, I like to keep the match moving. And there are, there are times when my R2 is going to be at the table and they're going to be checking on subs or something. And I have a tendency every once in a while of not seeing that and calling for a serve and then they have to whistle. So just important that you sweep the court both sides, make sure that your R2 is on the same page with you and is ready to go. And um, yeah, also an affirmation. Um, the first year I ever, I ever called the state tournament, I was a nervous wreck. And um, my, I was the R1. My R2 was the former coach at Roswell Goddard. The first name was Judy. And she was so great during that match. Give me a smile, thumbs up. She just kept me pretty calm. So I really appreciated that. Okay, it's also important to have a post-match debriefing. Now, it can be done in the gym if, you, if you've driven in separate cars. If you've driven in the same car, it's good to do that in the car on the way home. And the goal, goal of the debriefing is to help everyone improve their officiating skills and knowledge from analyzing um, the performance. Discuss, discuss what went well, 
discuss opportunities for improvement. If you can remember specific things during the match that you, you know, you can question each other and why you did this and why you didn't do that and so on and so forth. And if you had any unexpected situations or if you had to issue cards, discuss that and um, see maybe it could have been avoided if you had, if, if you had done something else differently. Hi, my name is Kathy Chavez. I live in Bloomfield and I am part of the Farmington group. Um, I've officiated for a long time. I officiated, started in Colorado for a couple years, was in Arizona for about 10 years, and then um, I've been in Bloomfield for 20, but I haven't officiated all those. I probably officiated 18 in New Mexico. Kathy, tell us a little bit about your volleyball experience. Well, I've been on all sides of the court. I I'm a former player, played in high school and college. I um, have officiated, I've coached, and I've been a parent. Watch, been in the stands watching my daughter play. Tell us your experience at state tournaments. Okay, I've been able to go to several state tournaments, and it's just been a great experience. Rosita, you muted yourself. Yeah, run that back, Rosita, so we can hear what Kathy's saying. Oh, we sorry. Can't what saying. I stands watching my daughter. Right from there. Well, I've been on all sides of the court. I, I'm, a, I'm a former player, played in high school and college. I um, have officiated, I've coached, and I've been a parent. Watch, been in the stands watching my daughter play. Tell us your experience at state tournaments. Yeah, I've been able to go to several state tournaments and it's just been a great experience. You get to see three days of the best volleyball in New Mexico. You meet officials from all around the state. You make some new friends. Um, I was honored last year to be able to call one of the championship matches and I learned quite a bit from it. You are able to um, get feedback from partners and crew from some of the top officials in the state. And it's always positive. It's oh, everyone is there to support you. They have your back. Um, it's really a nice um, atmosphere. And the NMAA staff does everything they can to make us comfortable and, and help us out. And you just, um, it's a great experience. I hope that all you guys can have a chance to do that one day. Um, you also can take stuff that you learn back to your own groups. And whether you're a rookie or a veteran, we always have room for improvement and it's a great way to learn and, and share with people across the state. What does it take for officials, specifically the R1 and the R2, to communicate effectively and have teamwork? Well, they need to plan on having teamwork the whole time from when they enter the gym together to greeting the coaches together. Um, they need to have a pre-match conference um, where they are discussing the R1 can say, here's my expectations, or the R2 can say, what is it that you need from me? Um, so they do that before the match, and then during the match, they need to have good communication, have eye contact, be centering with each other. Um, it's really helpful as an R1, if there's been a controversial call for the R2 to say, hey, you did a good job on that, just give them a discreet signal, or nod your head, or somehow let them know you think they're doing a good job, that's very helpful. Um, you need to back them up when there's a problem with the coach. If you're the R2, you should be, you know, getting in the way, making sure that that person isn't, isn't, um, able to approach the R1, uh, after the match, you guys should get together and leave the gym together. If you have a chance to try to debrief. Uh, but the idea is that you're both there for the kids and that you're backing each other up. We recently were informed that volleyball won't start until 2021. What encouraging words do you have for your fellow volleyball officials? Well, we need to stay positive. And in Sally and Dana's words, we will play again in New Mexico. Keep that in mind. Eventually, hopefully, we'll get back on the court. Uh, but it does give us extra time to prepare. 
So hopefully everyone will be going to all the meetings that the NMA is having um, and taking the time to talk to and reach out to other officials that they know if they have questions um, or aren't sure about some rules or something, this is a good time to catch up with some of that stuff. Uh, but just in the meantime, also stay safe and remember we will play again. Hi, my name is Natalia Pete. I am from the um, Gallup group in the Northwest region area. Originally, I'm from Tulsagai, New Mexico, um, but I live right now in uh, Rehobis. Tell me about your involvement with volleyball. Volleyball has been in my life for quite a bit. Uh, I started um, as a high school player, C team. Uh, JV varsity. Uh, I play recreational volleyball uh, every now and then. Uh, I've been uh, an official oh for maybe about six years now, six or seven years. One of my favorite sports to officiate. Um, so I, I really love being a volleyball official. I officiate basketball as well. Tell us about your experience at past state volleyball championship tournaments oh my um i have officiated at the state volleyball um tournament twice um so i was i was one of the lucky ones i i put my name in for uh to do lines and that's where i um i think i was meant to be a, a line judge <laughs> i love i love doing the lines at um state tournament it's been um it's been an incredible journey. Um, and I've also uh, been R1 and R2 this past year. It was such an incredible journey. Just the first day being there was a lot of information, a lot of growth in a short amount of time, like two or three days that you were there. And um, I was just soaking up every bit of information as I could. I was just an, a sponge. And just to be there, uh, just opened my eyes up to um, so many, uh, how to look at the game differently in a different aspect as uh, as being an official. You, you don't get that anywhere, especially um, with the game being so different, high intensity, um, just with the matches being very um, competitive. What does it take for officials to communicate effectively, meaning between the R1 and the R2 and have teamwork? It is so incredibly um, important to have communication. The communication that you have to have is through your mechanics, through, um, you know, with your eyes, you communicate a lot with um, your hand signals. It's just so vital. And you have to be together as you uh, go through a game. You have to be in sync with each other. That way you can have a great game. It's always a good game for me when I have a partner I can trust and a partner that will have my back, especially um, with um, the coaches. I think that's the only way um, that you can really have such a good match where you can just come off being excited, being happy, being proud, being willing to do your best. Um, because even if it's a bad game, but you know that your official um, either a top bottom whatever official you were that you guys were in sync that you guys handled it the best way you could sharing your information that is so vital as well with communicating sharing information on and off the court is so well i mean it's so good because um you get to learn from each other and the best thing about what i like about coming off a game is that you learn from another official and you're um coming off with so many more uh, so much more information that you didn't have before and then you can grow. We recently were informed that volleyball will start until 2021. What encouraging words do you have for your fellow volleyball officials? Oh my, uh, don't lose heart. <laughs> I, um, I was very, very sad. I was looking forward to having the season. I'm pretty sure many were. Keep looking in those books, keep learning. Um, that's my challenge to myself right now is to um, open my books. We got new books um, so we can go ahead and get it open and start learning, start, I mean, that gives us more than enough time 
for us to be a little more book savvy with our rules, um, with us getting to know more about, you know, the new things that are coming up, um, being ready and available. I guess that would that would be the thing and just be encouraged that this season will happen. I I am I'm really hoping. <laughs> so I'm gonna be I'm gonna definitely be um wanting to get ready for it. We appreciate your time. Thank you for the interview. Thank you. Thank you so much for um giving me this opportunity to speak. I really appreciate it. So our next section is communication between officials and the table crew. Your expectations of the duties, you need to go over the expectations of duties of the timer, scorekeeper, and the barrel tracker. Nonverbal cues and eye contact for subs and the barrel exchange. You need to go over handling of improper server or unexpected situations with a scorekeeper. And you need to make sure the scorekeeper knows how to do the recordings of the warnings, penalties, qualifications, and content violations. And one thing that as an R2, you need to please don't let the assistant coaches or a player scorekeeper approach the scorekeeper's table. You need to make sure they know all inquiries of any discrepancies need to go through the R2. Uh, my name is Ken Villarreal. I currently work for the Air Force at the uh, uh, Test and Evaluation Center here at Kirtland Air Force Base. Tell me about your involvement with volleyball. Uh, my extent to my volleyball involvement is uh, strictly for the uh, uh, NMA State uh, Volleyball Tournament. And how long have you been working the State Volleyball Tournament? Um, approximately 15 years. And at what role do you work at the State Tournament? Primarily as the a, uh, uh, scorekeeper on the scoreboard and then uh, I will do uh, uh, fill in for some music on the last day of the uh, tournament, as well as potentially some uh, PA. It was a very good experience. Uh, no, you know, you, uh, fortunately, there were no, uh, you know, uh, emotional significant events that I can recall, but uh, it seems as though, uh, uh, you know, everything went smooth to my recollection. So do you enjoy doing this, working at the state tournament? I do. I do work, uh, enjoy providing that, uh, you know, one community service and then two helping out the, the association with uh, the, uh, the overall uh, officiating table. And then uh, again, just providing being part of that excitement of the high school state volleyball tournament. In your opinion, you working the table, what does it take for officials to communicate effectively with, with the table crew and have teamwork? Yeah, I, uh, good question. And, you know, uh, in, in my mind, there's no such thing as over communication, you know, whether it be the the uh, the line judges, the R1s, the R2s, being able to give that uh, eye contact to be able to know what the, you know, points scored on either side of the court and to be able to understand uh, their uh, their uh, kind of ways that how they officiate the, the uh, volleyball game and, you know, during during timeouts, during breaks and games, being able to communicate uh, whether, you know, uh, the rotations, the substitutions, what have you, and just understanding their 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 methods of uh, com the nonverbal communications, the, the, the arm movements, the, the head movements, the, the whistle uh, uh, indicators of, of substitutions, what have you. Has there ever been a situation when there was a lack of communication or little communication? Uh, fortunately, I have not personally run into that uh, too often. Nothing, you know, again, but something of that nature could be the, the outcome of a, of a match, you know, but certainly that, that's been, you know, few and far between uh, what, I, what I've noticed as far as between officials, uh, as far as uh, the officials with the scores tables, you know, uh, the kind of the quick cadence with respect to substitutions going in and, and of trying to one speed up the game but uh, but on the on the flip side being able to ensure that uh, you know the proper 
substitutions are, 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 are being allowed into the game. So you have worked with many, many officials. Can you elaborate on good communication and how that has an outcome on the overall match? I think starting all the way from the beginning to uh, ensuring lineups are in proper order, ensuring the proper etiquette with respect to the teams, you know, uh, warming up the uh, coach and player uh, team meetings, uh, expressing the, the various uh, ways and procedures of how the game uh, will be officiated, you know, all the way from the tactics and procedures with respect to how the game is operated. A good indicator from my perspective, what I see is when, you know, and, and it's in any competition when when the flow of the game, you don't even realize there's officials on the volleyball court. And that's, that's been a kind of, you know, that's always kind of an indicator, hey, when there's the, the girls are just having fun, really officials not really be a big part of that and, and I think that's that's a good uh, indicator when you know the uh, match can go on where oh yeah there was by the way there's officials on the court <laughs> providing that to officiating. We recently were informed that volleyball will start until 2021. What encouraging words do you have for volleyball officials? Yeah enjoy the time off and uh, rest up for the busy uh, 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 schedule and conflicts that could potentially uh, uh, become a reality during the uh, uh, late winter and spring seasons of, of, of sporting events. No doubt, stay safe, stay healthy, stay six feet. Appreciate your time. Certainly, you're welcome, yeah. Hi, my name is Chris Castillo. Um, I'm an adaptive physical education teacher for the Albuquerque Public School System. I serve Manzano High School, Kennedy Middle School, and Mark Twain Elementary School. Tell us about your experience at the state volleyball championship tournaments. Um, my experience has been great. Um, I've been probably at the head table, I want to say maybe eight years now consecutively. Um, I consider it an honor um, to, to be working there and to have to be at the, the head table for this championship Saturdays, as well as, you know, work in the, the pool play and, and the bracket play uh, matches as well. Um, it's something I really look forward to. Um, you know, volleyball is probably my third passion next to teaching and Special Olympics, but it's something I love to be around and, and watch and get to know the coaches and get to know the officials. Um, so it's, it's, for me, it's a really pleasant experience and I really enjoy doing it. In your opinion, what does it take for officials to communicate effectively with the table crew and have teamwork? I think what's important in the communication is just turning around as far as the R2, turning around and making sure that we are on, we're on the same page. Um, you know, I've noticed that some officials have their own way of like, how do they want the clock to be buzzed? Um, you know, for me, it's like, do they only want me to talk to them about, oh, there's a question about the serving player. Um, so I always find it interesting to find out what is their what is their routine of how they want the table to be ran. So do they want to only talk to me? Are they okay talking to the timer? You know, hey timer, this is what I want you to do. Or I think having that communication from the very first set um, and going forward is a huge difference, makes a huge difference when it comes to that communication. And um, as long as they know that we're competent and they're competent, I think everything just runs super, super smoothly. So has there ever been a situation where there was a lack of communication or little communication? Yes. <laughs> there was an issue with the libero tracker and she wanted to get clarity and the, the R2 should have made the coaches leave the table. And instead, we had the two coaches coming at us. Um, and then you just get all, you know, you get all kind of nervous and you get, you're not really sure what's going on and what's happening. So I wish that communication that that official would have been, hey, coaches, you're not allowed to be here. Back up. Don't worry. We're going to we're going to figure out what's going on. And it was about a libero switch, you know, wanted to make sure that the libero who came out um, was going back in for the correct person right after the serve. And so, and it was, you know, again, if we, if he just kept it controlled and kept it calm, I think we could have handled it a lot, a lot better. It didn't make or break the results of the match, but it still like put us into this 
really super high tense anxiety level that I don't think we needed to really be at. How do you like for officials to communicate with you? Um, for me, as the head scorekeeper, I want just a look, a simple glance and a thumbs up. Like, are you okay? You know, are we ready? Did you get that, um, that substitution? I mean, it could just be simple things. It's just looking at me and going, okay, you all right? You know, thumbs up or, you know, do I need to slow down? I've had officials in the past that have come and say, am I going too fast? Do I need to slow down? Am I going too slow? So they, they ask me questions to see how to feel. If they know how the feel of the game is going um, and just kind of checking in with, with the table, I think it doesn't have to be every single serve, um, but just, you know, every couple of just, especially after a substitution, you know, you all right? Okay, you got that? Okay, we're good. All right, let's go. That's what I, you know, what I think is important. So some kind of hand gesture or just eye contact. Or we recently were informed that volleyball will start until 2021. What encouraging words do you have for the volleyball officials? Hang in there. <laughs> Be patient. I too was um, super sad because I look forward to the volleyball season. Um, like I said, I'm no longer a coach, but I, I do look forward to, to the matches and I do look forward to state. So I just want to encourage you to stay healthy, um, take care of yourself, and you know know that this too shall pass um, at some point. And I look forward to hanging out with you guys again. <laughs> you know, and, and seeing those. Those officials that I've gotten to know over the years. Well, thank you for your time. For sure, your absolutely. Hey, you too. You too. Thank you for reaching out. Jessica? Uh, communication. Oh, I don't think this is mine. Yeah, it is. <laughs> is it mine? Yeah. Okay. Communication between officials and line judges. <laughs> We've got um, expectations of duties. So you want to make sure you're clear with your line judges what your expectations are. Position during introductions, timeouts, match, in between sets. So where do you want these line judges to stand? So number one, they're safe. And number two, that you, um, that they're in, in a, a spot that you can debrief with them. Um, make sure that they've got the proper signals for in, out, touch. Uh, explain to them how important it is to have eye contact with you. Uh, you wanna make sure that that's very clear when they're on the court. And affirmation, thumbs up, nod. Sometimes this is, sometimes that's all you need between a good call and a not so good call is um, some affirmation to those line judges. You know, some games are really intense. And so it's always good to affirm some of their calls so they hang in there with you. It's really easy to lose line judges, especially if you've got these 15, 15 year old um, line judges that are not quite sure how the match is going to play out. My name is Larry Cox. I am from the I think we have it. Uh, Albuquerque group, to be specific. Uh, I've been involved in uh, volleyball for 17 years. I think it was um, 2003 when I joined NMAA. Uh, I started line judging uh, D1 college volleyball, uh, primarily for UNM. Tell us about your experience in the past state volleyball tournament uh, it all started right that very first year i was recruited to be a line judge and i had a blast and i guess i did okay because uh they What's kept up? bringing me back each no, year I'm after not. that um, you are very busy in those tournaments um, lots of opportunity to learn and to interact with other officials from around the state uh, to build relationships and uh, to see different teams from different parts of the, of the state. And over the years, uh, I've been a state volleyball championship a line judge from 5A all the way down to 1A. Uh, last year, I was pretty busy. I had the privilege of working uh, both R1 and R2 positions throughout the tournament. However, um, in between my matches, I've been approached by 
several officials who are also line judging. Uh, they wanted me to critique them and give them some pointers on how to be a better line judge. So in between matches, I rotated to whatever courts they were on, uh, watched them for a little bit, and uh, then we had a conversation about what I observed. And uh, I felt humbled in the first place that they would even ask me. Um, and I really enjoyed the interaction with them. At the end of this tournament this year, I was given the privilege to be the R1 for the 3A championship between Robertson and uh, St. Mike's. And it went five sets. It was a pretty heated match. I had a great crew. I had Rosita uh, Chavez, my R2. I had Myra Mims as my L1 and Jesus Lopez as my L2. And my table crew was also awesome. Um, it was pretty heated contest and uh, each of my crew members played an important role throughout that match in different, different aspects of that match. Uh, to make sure that we had a successful uh, match. Tell us what you take away from the state tournament as a line judge and an official. Well, first of all, uh, regardless of which role you play, the tournament is a blast. Secondly, each role is important. At that level of play, each person needs the other to do their job well, uh, to be fully engaged throughout the match. Uh, at that level of play, the the teams are using all 1,800 square feet of court space, and you need to be ready for that ball to hit right on the lines uh, and fast. Um, when all the officials and the line judges are, are performing uh, at their peak, the match runs so much smoother. Uh, when one of the officials or line judges is not able to do that, it negatively affects the whole crew, actually. Uh, each one feeds off of the other one, the other energy, the other mental capacity, and they, and they have a tendency to start second-guessing themselves or wondering um, whether the call was right or not. Um, so we need to be ready, um, even after a long term like that, that takes up a lot of energy, to be ready um, to, to perform at your best that you can. What does it take for the officials to communicate effectively with line judges and working as a team? Uh, communication is, is vital. Um, it starts, it all starts at pre-match, right? With the, with the whole crew being together and it, and it continues throughout the match. The R1 uh, letting, that needs to let the line judges know what they want from them as far as signal presentation is concerned, assuring them that they are vital to a successful outcome, uh, building a rapport uh, that affirms that your belief in them um, and their abilities. And then maybe review a few difficult scenarios that, that you want to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Things like pancakes, whether you're going to call it or not, or what, what are you going to, how are you going to look up to the R1 and let her know or let him know whether it was down or whether it was up, timeouts, where to go uh, when, during the timeouts. Um, touches at the nets, even no calls, even no calls need to be clearly communicated. And then during the match, eye contact. Eye contact is huge um, from everyone, uh, from R1 to the line judges, the line judges back to the R1. Communication needs to be, to be clear, it needs to be consistent, and it needs to be confirming. Every time that a call is made, especially a tight one, a, a hard one, um, there needs to be some nodding, some, some eye contact that said that was a great call, that was a great job. And, and then the post-match debrief um, is where learning for future matches can take place. We recently were informed that volleyball won't start until 2021. What encouraging words do you have for the volleyball officials? New or veteran official, you need to stay the course. For those returning, keep preparing as you normally would and then use this extra time to make the necessary adjustments from what you've been used to, to what the new COVID protocols are. Um, for those of you who this is gonna be your first year, take this extra time to get into the rule book, Facebook, um, find a veteran that you can relate to, uh, to ask questions or guidance in, in this interim period. And of course, for all of us, uh, we need to practice using our new toy, our electronic whistle. January is going to be here before you know it. The season will start. We need to be ready. Appreciate your time and thanks for the interview. You're welcome. Glad I could do it.
so now we're going to talk about the communication between the art team and the coaches. So you set a tender of communication um, before the game with your appearance, your introductions, your pre-match, your posture. You know, if you come in and you stand there with your arms crossed and you're not very approachable. And so, so and coaches see that. Coaches notice that. So, um, like, so you need to be prepared. Acknowledge coaches' request, request and questions. Be a good listener. <laughs> Listen to understand. Rosita, your volume disappeared. Can you hear me? I, I'm able to hear you on my end. Um, I'm not sure what happened to your volume. It just it just got really quiet. It's still there, but it's it went from really good sound to really quiet. I can hear you, but it's super. Okay, so, okay. can you hear me now? <laughs> so be a good listener. Listen to understand. Learn to respond, not react. That's really good advice. <clears throat> explain the call and explain the rule. When it, a veteran official once told me to not. Hey, hey, Rosita, one second, real quick. Let me troubleshoot. Um, hit your uh, your settings and see if you can't turn up your mic volume. All right. Uh, in the chat, uh, we, we're, we're definitely fixing the volume issue. So if you guys will hold on. Let me, can you hear me? So in your settings, I believe that you can, sorry, I'm not looking at my, actually go to the arrow with your, uh, where you mute and unmute. And you can go to your audio settings. And your input volume. I don't see the arrows. So there's an arrow. There's an arrow right next to your mute, unmute. Can John just do this live or Sharon? Okay, so um, so you need to be a good listener, listen to understand, learn to respond, not react, explain the call, explain the rule. So make sure when you are talking to the coaches, you use the verbiage of the rule book. You need to anticipate requests, the subs, replacements, and timeouts. Um, I know as an official, you, you're thinking in your head, man, that coach needs to call a timeout. They need to call a timeout. Um, the subs, you pretty much know you get the rhythm of when the subs come in. Um, you get the rhythm of when the replacements come in and out. So um, always anticipate your requests. Next slide, Rosita.
was the seventh grade girls volleyball coach and then I moved up mm -hmm. and was the head volleyball coach since then and I've been involved with girls athletics and coach for the past 36 years. When should coaches be allowed to engage with officials during a match? Um, officials are an integral part of the match and so I really feel that coaches should be able to interact with them if they have a question about a call I think that they should be able to ask the down official, not, you know, attack them, which I know that a lot of times it comes off like we are attacking them. But if there is a questionable call, I think that there's a time and a place where we should be able to ask them for it. And I know during the pregame, pregame and in between sets, there is a time where I think they should be able to interact with them in a nice and courteous way, not in a vicious way, I guess is a good way to say that. From a coach's perspective, what does it take for an official to communicate effectively with coaches? Um, you know, at the pregame, pregame is big. I do believe before the match even starts, with the, as the officials come into the gym. Um, also, after the game, um, we've been blessed up here in our area with the four corners where our officials have been very good about inviting coaches to come to the officials. Um, when they have their group meetings and we can interact then and I think just having that relationship with our officials outside of the match itself I think that helps prior to having the match and I think if you have that open line of communication that you'll hi I'm Anna Strauss yeah. and I and, and I've been involved with girls athletics and coached for the past 36 years. When should coaches be allowed to engage with officials during a match? Um, officials are an integral part of the match. And so I really feel that coaches should be able to interact with them. If they have a question about a call, I think that they should be able to ask the down official, not you know attack them which I know that a lot of times it comes off like we are attacking them. But if there is a questionable call, I think that there's a time and a place where we should be able to ask them for it. And I know during the pregame pre and in between sets, there is a time where I think they should be able to interact with them in a nice and courteous way, not in a vicious way, I guess is a good way to say that. From a coach's perspective, what does it take for an official to communicate effectively with coaches? Um, you know, at the pregame, pregame is big. I do believe before the match even starts with the, as the officials come into the gym. Um, also after the game, um, we've been blessed up here in our area with the four corners where our officials has been very good about inviting coaches to come to the officials um, when they have their group meetings and we can interact then and I think just having that relationship with our officials outside of the match itself I think that helps prior to having the match and I think if you have that open line of communication that you'll feel it's okay to talk to the official and you'll know when to say the right thing and when not to say something and you'll know when it's okay to communicate. You've traveled throughout the state. Has there ever been a situation when there was a lack of communications with the officials? Um, I've, you know, I've been very fortunate of coaching for 36 years. I've got to travel the entire state, Roswell, Clovis, Albuquerque, Santa Fe, Las Cruces. Um, and I've really ever been in a situation where I've not been able to talk to an official or approach an official and ask about a call. I've never been denied a denied communication with anybody. Everybody's been very respectful and able to talk to an official. So I feel really blessed with that, that I've always been able to communicate with them. What advice would you give to an official in dealing with a heated coach? I can remember two incidents in my life that I would just say just to remain calm and stand your ground. That would be, and probably the biggest thing is remaining calm and don't instigate any other issues and just remain calm and make sure that the other official and the, um, the administration of the school has your back and 
just remaining calm, basically. That's, that's probably the biggest thing is just to remain calm and stand your ground. We recently were informed that volleyball will start until 2021. What encouraging words do you have for the volleyball officials? Um, you know, it was, it was heartbreaking for us as coaches and with the players. And I know as an official, that is your passion or you wouldn't be doing it. And I could just say, just stay positive, um, have a good mindset. And we just have to remember that we are going to play. And the reason that we're here is for the kids and we just have to remain positive and just have a good outlook on the whole situation. And this could be a time where we can get better as officials. I know I'm gonna use it as a time to get better as a coach and I'm gonna help my kids get better as players. So all I can say is stay positive. Thank you, Anna, for your interview. We appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, refs. My name is Morris Baker. I'm the volleyball coach at Farmington High School. Um, I coached on and off. I think I was three or four years at Heights and then two years at PV as the C team coach and then back to Heights for three or four years. Uh, then I went to Socorro as their head coach for two years and this is my second year at Farmington High School. When should coaches be allowed to engage with officials during a match? I would say any time, but not all the time. They really think they're right or it's a rule interpretation. The coaches that engage officials all the time, it just, the, the officials begin to tune them out. Anytime, but all the time. And that anytime needs to be meaningful. From a coach's perspective, what does it take for officials to communicate effectively with coaches? Examples of really good communication. Jackie Begay was the R2 and I'm yelling at her and Jackie finally did this. I'm being nice to you but that's not going to last. And to me, that was fantastic. That was perfect. I was being a jerk. She turned and politely let me know that it was time to stop. And that, that was perfect communication. Um, another good example was uh, Kathy Chavez. I, I put a girl to serve in the wrong spot. We ran off eight or nine points and I'm sitting there thinking, I should stop this because I know I'm serving her in the wrong spot, but we're on this run and I, if they catch us, then, you know, so I'm, I'm going back and forth with what to do. And later on after our run and we rotate again and now we get caught and now, you know, Kathy's telling me this is the consequence and this is going to happen. And now I'm saying, well, no, you didn't catch us at that point. And but there was just really good communication. And two days later I ended up, realizing that I probably hadn't followed the rules. And the next time I saw Kathy, I told her, you know, I said, I wasn't trying to get one up on you. I felt that I was right at the time, but it turns out you were right. So just, just good open communication about what's happening in the moment and, and take your time. There's no need to rush the match. Just take a moment and tell the coach what your, what your reasoning is that I may not agree with it and still say, well, you're wrong, but at least I know your perspective middle school match we got called for being out of rotation and the girls were kind of looking at me and I held my hands up to the ref and tried to get an answer and she looked at my kids and looked at our opponents and whistled the ball in and we weren't even remotely ready no communication so as a coach and as players that's frustrating we just need to know were we standing out of rotation were we were we moving out of rotation and and to have no communication, just a, just a complete blank stare is, is not good. We tried to, to sub and it was late and the official waved us off and we tried to sub again a couple points later and there was just a hand. And we tried to sub again the next point in the same hand. And so now we're, we're getting upset. Well, are we, we have subs left. That's, we don't have 18 subs used. We're not late. Why can't we sub? It, it, it would be simple just to say, I'm going to punish you because you were late and you're annoying me. That would be better communication than just this. What advice would you give to an official in dealing with a heated coach? Officials have to be a little bit of a psychologist. They have to know when the coach is venting and when they're being a jerk. You know, co coaches get frustrated and they may be frustrated at their kids, but they don't want to turn and yell at their kids. So they're going to yell at the next person they can. And that might be a ref. And so the, they're venting. And as a ref, you want to give them a little vent time. 
But if it gets to the point where you say, okay, you're, you're a jerk, stop. You can just politely, maybe at the end of a timeout, say, say, you know, coach, I understand you're frustrated and I've, I've heard you vent, but I, I think I've heard enough. So, so I'm done. We recently were informed that volleyball will start until 2021. What encouraging words do you have for the volleyball officials? I'll just, just hang in there. I mean, we, we've been at FHS, we've been in the gym since June 15th, hoping to go to college camps in July, and that didn't work. And then we continued in July, hoping to play in August, and that didn't work. And we continued in August and September, hoping to play in October, and that didn't work. And, you know, we, we love the game, and it, we're at the point where we're just in the gym because we like the game. Um, so just just stay with it. Keep Keep working on your craft. Keep studying the rules. Don't give up on us. Don't give up on New Mexico. Don't give up on our governor. Um, I, I think we will get in the gym in the spring. Thank you, Lars, for your time. My pleasure. We look forward to seeing you guys soon, hopefully. Sharon, you're muted. Who's talking? Sharon is talking. Oh. Sharon, you're muted. Sharon. John, can you go ahead? All right. So I believe that ends our presentation. But teamwork makes the dream work with effective communication. I just want to make one note. Um, not many of you have been out to officiate the Northwest, but we lost um, one of the best scorekeepers I've ever had the pleasure of dealing with, a lady by the name of Mary Lou Brown, who um, worked the table down in Zuni for 39 years. And she was probably one of the best scorekeepers that I've ever had the pleasure of working with. I learned of her passing uh, in the paper on Saturday. So just a shout out to, to Mary Lou. And Rosita and Sharon and Jessica, shout out for what you put together. And then thanks to all these people who um, helped us put this together. Tammy and Nate and Dana and all of our uh, interviews guys did a, a really great job. And I think we have a poll that we would like you to take. So we have this quiz time. So the question is, what is, what is an example of effective communication on the court? Nate, if you'll bring up the, Launch. I'll launch it. Is it ready to launch? I believe so. All right. Yeah. Here we go. There it, there it goes. So respond to text messages from friends, responding to a coach with the stop sign, calmly explaining to a coach the proper procedure for a libero exchange after some confusion. Ignoring a coach who is requesting a lineup check. And your answer is, if you'll submit that. <laughs> They're flying in. <laughs> We're at 70, 81 of 152. <laughs> and I've actually seen the first one happen, but not really text messages. It was a phone call during a football game that a, an official responded to. And then people wonder why I have gray hairs. <laughs> well, while the poll is kind of wrapping up, I just want to say thank you to John, Rosita, Sharon, and Jessica for the presentation. Um, really cool concept with the interviews and everything in presentation. That was uh, that was outstanding. Um, I appreciate you incorporating people from different roles and different parts of the state. Um, Really good job. Um, next week, of course, we'll have our 
uh, presentation again on Monday night. The Southeast region will be presenting macro attacks by the Libra. So that'll be our topic for next Monday. But uh, this, was, this was absolutely outstanding. It looks like everybody who has voted is uh, going to. So I'm gonna end the poll and share the results. Overwhelmingly, <laughs> uh, the, our officials answered correctly. I really hope that the two person, the two people who said respond to text messages just have an extraordinarily good sense of humor. Um, otherwise, I, I feel concerned by 2% of the respondents. But uh, other than that, uh, great job. Um, that was, again, great job with collaborative, um, a collaborative presentation tonight across the two groups between uh, Farmington and Gallup. That's exactly the kind of stuff that we love to see. And uh, yes, Nate was the uh, the individual who did the intro video. He is our in-house tech guru and you're welcome for the pictures. That's kind of my little fun thing that I like to do is take pictures of all the officials during tournaments. I'm like that crazy aunt at Christmas who takes all the pictures. That's me at tournaments. So. Uh, that's a lot of fun as well, but great job, everybody. Um, if there are no questions, it's been about an hour, so we try to keep it to an hour. Uh, Nate will send out the uh, yeah. the okay. attendance stuff. Oh, go ahead, Nate. Yeah, so with the attendance, um, I know that in the last couple of weeks, uh, there's been a couple of officials that are frustrated with their you know, with what uh, they receive when they get that email. If there's an error, no problem. Send me an email, say, hey, I was there last night. Um, I've got the attendance. I'll go in there and I'll correct it. And, and it's not a big deal. So uh, don't stress out about it and, and don't get frustrated. It's, it's really an easy fix. And so um, a lot of times I'm looking at 250 um, numbers or 250 officials sometimes just a typo in a box. So it's an easy fix. Um, if, if you have any questions about your, your meeting attendance or your um, rating, feel free to email me. I'll make sure to look into it and get it fixed. And then just one thing to note, we have individuals who are registered with our association under one name, and then they sign in for meetings under another name. So if you can make sure that we have a, some consistency so we know who you are, um, if you've got aliases floating out there, we, we need to know which name you would prefer to be called. So, Absolutely. Um, and, and actually, I'm glad you brought that up, Dana, because uh, the mistakes that are happening on attendance have everything to do with what your arbiter name login is and what you're um, signing in uh, into uh, uh, these meetings are. So make sure that it's exactly, and I'll give an example, William Haddis and Bill Haddis are two different they come up differently. So um, if you can try to, you know, use your arbiter name, that'd be great. And absolutely great job with getting coaches and scorekeepers involved. Anybody who's worked the state tournament or who works a lot in um, the Albuquerque area, we all know how valuable Chris is. She's, she's absolutely outstanding. And I know we've got a lot of really quality scorekeepers and table workers across the state. So it was nice to kind of honor them as well. I, I appreciate the out outside of the box approach y'all used and it was just absolutely outstanding. So thank you all for your work and uh, everybody have a good rest of your night. I'm going to start thinking of a new football team to follow because Dallas is just horrible right now. But uh, I mean, after 40 odd years, I can't give them up yet, but God, they just they annoy me. But anyway, thank you all again and have an outstanding evening, a wonderful week, and we will see y'all next Monday. Bye. Bye. Good night, night, everybody. Good night, Dana. Good night. Thanks, John. Night, Sharon. I'll see you Sharon, Jessica. Jessica. Good night. Good night. I hope you're not crying too bad. Great job, Northwest. You guys did a really good job. I'm impressed. That was excellent. It Thank was. You. Excellent job. Thanks, yeah. Great, great Thank job, you. guys. Thank you, John. Yeah, we'll, we'll see you. We'll see you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Rosita. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks.